Hi everybody, this is Hero. I'm here with a Path of Exile video in the new Ancestor season for Path of Exile 1. And I was just checking out a couple of the new things that came in, specifically the gem Trauma. Uh, trauma support is essentially replicating the Bone Shatter gameplay. And so this video, I just want to talk about uh, a unique take on trauma support that I've always kind of had a close eye on because I play a little bit of PoE, mostly, you know, RF jug and all this horrible stuff. But I have been trying to make Heavy Strike work as a build because Heavy Strike is just a hilarious button to press. You knock things back and it's kind of weird. And Path of Exile really is a game about doing your best to come up with something really wacky and seeing if it plays out. So half of the fun of Path of Exile, in my view, is kind of under the hood, developing an idea, trying to execute it, ensuring that you have the necessary offensive and defensive pieces to make a build viable. The gameplay itself is often very similar, meaning you're running around, um, hitting packs, you know, jumping through the air, this kind of thing, beating up packs, and off you go. But one of the things that makes yeah, the game interesting over and over again is, aside from the little seasons giving you new things to think about, your the build variety in how you get to the ability to do this in a map is really what matters. And this build is designed to be sort of a, a ramping single target build. It, and I'll talk a little bit about it in the course of this video. But the point is, how can we make heavy strike work? Um, and why would we want to make it work, first of all? Well, there's a couple of actually good reasons, but there are reasons that you probably would not want to make it work because there are just better options for producing single target physical damage that give you a little bit more protection. Uh, but the main mechanic that we're trying to scale within this build is the capacity for Heavy Strike to do two interesting things. Number one, it has a chance to do double damage. So that's just a really great multiplier on whatever build you put together. And number two, it uh, gives us a fairly good stun threshold. So stunning in this game takes quite a bit of effort. And generally speaking, it's not worth the effort to try to invest in what we think of as stun reduction threshold. So the capacity for you with your one hit of an ability to produce the little orange circle around a mob's head and actually stun them. Let me see if I can find a mob and show you. Well, we're at the boss. Well, maybe maybe it'll work on the boss here. Um, so the stun effect, see that little circle that's going over top of that guy's head? He's stunned for about five seconds there. We can, ooh, we're going to die here. Um, if I just keep stunning these mobs, the, the really lovely effect is they are unable to take any action. So what that means for me as a player is I have free reign to do whatever I'd like. My damage, I can move around. I'm not having to deal with mechanics because I'm just removing the mobs and the characters from the gameplay. It's It stuns them. So that's one thing that Heavy Strike, that incentivizes building around something like Heavy Strike because it gives you a nice chunky amount of reduced enemy stun threshold to build on. And there's other parts of your um, tree that enable you to do this. Specifically with maces, you get some Again, reduced enemy stun threshold here in the tree. Um, you can do it with other other skills and a few other pieces as well. Um, so that's the first thing that makes Heavy Strike kind of interesting. The second one's actually knockback because you um, you can use an item. I'll go back to town and show you that a pair of gloves that allows you to reverse the knockback effect, so you can actually drag mobs in toward you from a long way away. And you can see here I have a few of the strike nodes in my tree that are allowing me to do that uh, from a distance. So I have a, a better range on my hit and when my hit strikes, it splashes and all of those splashes, if I was using Goliath Gauntlets, would pull everything in, kind of like an AoE suck from other video games. And the reason it does it is because Heavy Strike has a 100% chance to knock back. It knocks enemies back every time it hits. What we've gone and done is taken the next step in the evolution of this build. I started out with a normal heavy strike, not a divergent one. I'll talk about that in a second. 
and I used Empire's Grasp so that uh, when I'm playing Heavy Strike and you don't have this pair of gauntlets, you just are continually knocking away your enemies and it can be frustrating to stay on target. But this essentially allows you to leap into a pack and then you just suck them in. But obviously this isn't uh, a glove that does much else for you other than that effect. So to get it up to the next level, we're looking to pick up a pair of uh, Tanu Ahi worm scale gauntlets, which are enabling the other side of what this build does. So in order to make this pair of gloves work, we really need to get ourselves a divergent heavy strike, which I think was something like 10 C on trade. And this allows us to up the quality and get rid of the knockback. You can see here 100% reduced knockback distance. So technically we're still knocking things back, but we've evened out the amount of knockback distance that a target can go. It can go exactly zero yards or whatever the calculation is. And so it stays in place. This is kind of how Path of XL really works in general. For all builds, you are looking at different capacities within either your gear or your talent tree or the enchantments you can put on things. All of the different layers of the gameplay or gems that enable and disable certain kinds of actions. So if you want to get into it, it's a fairly steep curve in terms of all of the things going on. And I guess PoE2 is coming out as well. So it's uh, maybe not even advisable. But what's really fascinating about it is if you put your mind to it, you can come up with uh, connections that are very interesting and builds that are somewhat unusual. I don't know of anybody doing a serious heavy strike build. And I want to show you how it is that trauma support really enables us to make this work. So you can see here when I'm fighting mobs, I'm obviously getting the splash damage and this is a low, I'm still kind of leveling up on this character. So please bear with me, but this is a low level uh, map. I'm still in a white map here essentially. But what we're doing is we are going to stack together a number of mechanics that allow us to keep up stacks of trauma. Trauma is produced on my character. I'm at 23 stacks here. You can see them falling down. Every single time I press heavy strike, I get a stack. And the goal, even with bone shatter, is fairly pretty much the same. And so what you want to do is stack your capacity through attack speed to quickly build up stacks. So we get attack speed modifiers. And as I hit this mob, you can see I was slowly going up to 2430. And each time you get a trauma stack, you are adding damage modifiers onto your heavy strike. In this case at level 18, which is kind of beyond the threshold that's usually recommended for leveling up this support because of the damage intake that you receive personally, every time you get a stack, you are adding physical damage. And you are also, look at this, increasing the stun duration for those trauma stacks. So that's why I chose to try to build Divergent Heavy Strike or just Heavy Strike in general this time around for this league because trauma support not only was giving me a, an ability to scale the damage of Heavy Strike, but it's also synergistic with stunning. So I thought, let's give it a try and see what we get. And I've been really impressed with it. The real winner in my mind actually is how accessible this is. So I just showed you some of the early game items that you can acquire for one or two C. There's another one that really enables this. Maybe you saw it in my uh, gear selection. It's Bright Beak, which also is an item you can easily pick up off the trade for like one C. It's a fairly common, unique to find. And uh, you get this very early. What's lovely about Bright Beak is it is enabling the gameplay all by itself through the 2.11 attack speed. Attack speed is so important for our goals in this build because it's, it sort of double dips, if you'd like, on how much damage we can produce. And double dipping, I wanna be really clear, is an important thing to understand. We sometimes misuse the term. What it means is you have quadratic scaling. So every time you're adding attack speed, you're also adding damage and that itself is producing more attacks, which is producing more damage. So it's it's scaling quadratically. Um, 
The way to do this really is actually with a divergent bone shatter, or in the case of trauma support, a divergent trauma support. If you look on the trades, that's going for something like two divs or some really expensive price. So my goal long term is to get into heist and try to find some divergent trauma supports or just, you know, farm some currency and get the support itself. But that's what's going to enable the quadratic scaling because in the different quality, instead of it just giving you reduced enemy stun threshold, what you're getting is attack speed for trauma stacks. So your attack speed will be scaling with the number of stacks you get. And that that's what grants you the double dipping that makes trauma support so powerful. Now, when it's only attached to bone shatter, it limits the number of strike skills you can use. Bone shatter, for example, doesn't have double damage. So we can use a weapon that gives us double damage, but itself on the, the skill doesn't have it. It also doesn't really have a lot of stun, uh, like reduced enemy stun threshold. So it's not, um, the same kind of ability as Heavy Strike. I mean, maybe Bone Shatter is completely fine anyways, but it doesn't work with Trauma Support for obvious reasons. They both grant Trauma, and having Heavy Strike synergizing with the stun side is really kind of cool. Now, how is it possible to maintain these stacks? They have a duration, and it's a fixed duration, and the stack doesn't add to the duration, meaning if I gain a stack, I don't increase the duration of a previous stack. They all run down together, and you'll see some of them fall off in rapid succession here. They're at 11, coming down. I'll just get, uh, maybe I have to get out of combat, but you can see here, they're gonna start to fall off, nine, eight, seven, six. So the ones underneath the, the most recent one that is showing on my tooltip, those ones are also ticking down independent of it, and they're falling off. So we need some mechanism for maintaining high stacks. And you can see here, every time I hit, I'm getting a 16 second trauma stack. So how is this possible? And let me just kill this rare here. What we're doing in our tree is we are gonna pick up some item or some pieces that give us increased skill effect duration. We get it over here near the scion increase skill effect duration in this entire wheel. But we're also going to actually go ahead and use increased duration support. You think, wow, that's kind of stupid. The thing to remember is you could use um, brutality, like heavy melee physical damage amps, more, more physical damage. You could use those. But what we are trying to do here is scale the number of trauma stacks that we can build in a short amount of time so that at the beginning of a boss fight, we can ramp up and once we get our divergent trauma support, we can scale, uh, scale quadratically very quickly into a fight and get really, really, really high stacks of trauma. That enables us to stun things because we have high damage. Um, we are hitting far more often uh, all of these things working together nicely. But the way to do it is to ensure that as soon as we gain a stack, it's not going to fall off after six seconds. You can see here, trauma lasts 6.7 seconds at level 18. I think it's a little higher once you get to level 20. Maybe it's like seven seconds or something. But if we use the skill effect gem, increase duration, excuse me, and we scale more skill effect duration, we have the capacity to push that to 16, 17, 18 seconds, which gives us enough space to be able to scale it so that we are we are always building stacks over time rather than there being a plateau where we're losing as many as we're gaining. And that's gonna depend a little bit on our attack speed, of course, and that's the other thing that we wanna be scaling to ensure that we are ramping our damage in a very true sense of actually quadratically ramping it up as we go. So the gameplay, like a lot of, oh, I just died there. Like a lot of um, melee is still hopping around, jumping into mobs and, you know, mailing them down. Um, there's nothing really substantively different about that. We are making use of Jug to give us some tankiness, and I'll mention how that interacts with this build in general. But if you're used to Bone Shatter mechanics, it's kind of a similar type of gameplay. Um, 
What I like about this build is I can feel over time how the scaling is working so I can tell that I'm improving my build. What I mean by that is I didn't always have the physical damage reduction to um, maintain trauma. I didn't always have the attack speed to stack trauma. And as I built in more and more pieces, I felt in the actual gameplay that my attack speed was increasing, my trauma stacks were going up, I was able to sustain them as we go. So let me talk a little bit about what it means, what's the main pieces for actually sustaining. The most important one is untiring. Untiring is the only way to enable trauma stacking outside of Slayer. And Slayer is the other ascendancy and the way you do it in Slayer is by leeching. Since your overleech is not capped, you can automatically be leeching and that will scale with your attack speed and your damage to ensure that you never one-shot yourself. But frankly, at the highest levels when you have a ton of trauma stacks, um, untiring is really the only way to go because if you, um, you know, you might get hit as a slayer, it's, it's awkward. If you get out of range for a second and you come back in, some of the timing's bad, whereas regeneration is a little more predictable. And there's other pieces to the kit of the jug that help to mitigate against high stacks. But at the very baseline, all you need to get this started is untiring. Now, the number of stacks that you can scale to is really going to be dependent on your capacity to limit physical damage. Just like Bone Shatter, Heavy Strike with Trauma Support is doing physical hits. Some of the, the ways we can get around this or deal with it is by stacking Endurance Charges. So when you use or when you gain Endurance Charges, you have some physical added physical damage. That's a very key word that will be reduced. You can get this same thing on some of your gear. So additional physical damage reduction is what you're looking for. This is a great talisman for it. Um, on your shield, you can get the same 7% 7, 7 additional physical damage. You can get it on your helmet as well. I don't have it here. And also on your chest as well, up to, I think, 12% on the chest. Maybe it's 8 But these two pieces can also feature it. These are some ways to get additional physical damage reduction. The other way to do it is to put on Arctic Armor. Arctic Armor is going to give you less physical damage taken when you're stood still. And for this build's purposes, when you're fighting a boss, you're just going to be sat there hitting heavy strikes, so you will be counted as standing still. Um, finally, Enduring Cry is an important piece. The buff is granting you 2% additional physical damage reduction per endurance charge. So in Jug, we can stack some more endurance charges. We get Unflinching, which gives us plus one to maximum charges. You can grab a couple of charges that are fairly close by on the tree. Stamina on this side and Vigor on that side. And there's probably a few other ways to build this, by the way. Um, you can also come up here to Endurance to get another one. You can get some boots that give you one. You can get a couple of combs rings if you really want to, but I don't really recommend that to push it even further. All of those, again, will give you that additional physical damage reduction while Enduring Cry's buff is running. So you can see here it's running for four seconds. That gets me about halfway through the Enduring Cry window. There are ways to improve that uptime. The increased Warcry uh, buff effect is what you're looking for to ensure that you have the physical damage reduction uptime fully mapped out. And I don't have that completely done. I think there are a few other ways to make sure that Enduring Cry is coming back off cooldown in time so that you have 100% uptime on the Cry itself, which gives you that very important added physical damage reduction. That is how you complete the cycle of getting your quadratic scaling going through the Divergent uh, trauma support, mitigating against the added damage by having enough ad additional physical damage and just high armor in general to manage stack intake that you're getting. And then you want the attack speed in a variety of ways to make sure that you can ramp up stacks quickly. So obviously base attack speed on Warhammer is really important here. Brightbeak, there's really nothing that comes close to it and nothing that's available. And again, we don't really need to scale anything other than the number of stacks of trauma we have to build our damage profile. So you can afford to do faster attack support. You can afford to do uh, things like Vol Haste when you have access to that. 
not the aura, but just pressing the button, you'll want to have uh, Ancestral Protector out, which again gives you 19% more attack speed, more being a really important word here. Um, the other ways I'm doing it is I'm using Blood Rage to give me attack speed as well. And then I'm making use of um, Rage Generation, which I'm getting by putting Warlord's uh, Mark <clears throat> on my target. So you'll see that's the curse I, I want to be occurring. I think I have it with a cast when damage taken at the moment, but you could Warlord's Mark, here we go. Warlord's Mark is giving you um, access to Rage and Rage is gonna increase your attack speed and that's awesome. But we can also convert that through Berserk, which I use on cooldown once we've built up to 60 Rage. So you can see just stacking all of these attack speed modifiers together. We also, I even happened to get the enchant for heavy strike just to see what it was like and to test some of these things. Makes it so that you can do a, a large number of attacks in one second. Those are gonna all produce each individual attack, a stack of trauma, and you can see where we're going from this. As long as you can survive the trauma stacks, you will continue to chain stun all of your enemies. And chain stunning the enemy means they're really not going to do anything. The, the stun will last a long time because we're basing the stun duration on the number of trauma stacks that we have, which in my case gets it up where around five or six seconds worth of stun duration. So once especially you get a, a boss lower, they'll be stunned for the entire duration and you'll always hit them enough times to stun them in that duration so that they have full 100% uptime on stun. So this was my take on Heavy Strike. I, I am kind of in early days, so I, this is before yellow maps, um, and actually before I've gotten my final passive, so I still need to go into the lab to get to the final lab piece. But what I'm gonna do with that, of course, is just fill out my defensive side, not the offensive side. So I've taken Undeniable because we can scale our accuracy rating for more, you bet it, attack speed, and that just makes sure we're always gonna be hit capped, which is great, we've even grabbed accuracy here, and could work our way over to precise techniques to amplify our damage even more. But the what I really want to grab for my next lab and for the final one is physical damage reduction from endurance charges. So here we're getting, of course, just that extra layer of defense to protect us. And uh, I'm I'm excited, guys. I'm I'm interested in scaling this into bosses. I'll try to release another video when I do some. If I get up to elder and shaper and uber elder, these kinds of things, to see if it goes. I do have some deficiencies in this build and some in inefficiencies. It may be that things like War Banner are not um, worth it really, and there's some other buffs. We may want to go and grab some reservation here and think about putting some other auras in. Um, I might want to get, I don't know, is it Pride? Not Pride, whatever the, the major aura is that does ramping physical damage taken. Maybe that's in the cards. You guys can let me know. Um, I'll try to put the paste bin for the POB of specifically where this character is at, at level 77. But so far, guys, it's so hilarious. You just run, run around and you completely dominate everything. Everything in the area gets stunned. Bosses get stunned. Mobs get stunned. Um, and I know I know we're in early, early maps here, but it's been a pleasure. So I just wanted to get this out here. Here, maybe we'll we'll try a thicket map. Maybe I'll die. I have no idea. I still have to figure out the defenses a little bit, but it's been a blast. Thanks so much for watching, and hopefully I can release a few more videos about what's happened so far. If you like Heavy Strike and have never had a chance to try it, if you're looking for uh, an outlet for trauma support, there are lots of interesting options that people have tried. This one seems to me to be the most effective use of all of the pieces, the stun, the capacity to... Um, do double damage, so you get all of your damage essentially built into just two gems and you can scale attack speed exactly as you like it. You can focus on stacking um, your physical damage reduction and off you go. So have fun guys and we'll see you again next time.